Welcome to The Pulse with Peter V. I'm your host, Peter Biancavano. Let's get you to The Pulse on everything you need to know. And I'm excited because I am at the most happening, newest, hippest, I cannot think of any more adjectives, place in town, and that is Sangria Restaurant, located at 800 Jackson Street on the corner of 8th and Jackson. And we have an extremely special guest joining us, and that is the owner here at Sangria. Come on over, Alfredo, and that is Alfredo Alfonso. Alfredo, how are you today? Alonso. Alonso, what did I say? Alfonso. Alfonso. <laughs> My apologies for that. Alfredo Alonso. There you go. Exactly. Thank you for having us. Today. You got it. My pleasure. Absolutely. Alfredo, how long have you guys been here? Well, this place started in October of uh, last year, mm -hmm. but actually the Sangria restaurant started in 2014 in Mawa. So this is our second location. Wow, I did not know that, see? You learn something new every time you're on the Pulse, even me. I mean, I probably should have done my research, folks. My apologies about that. And what are the things that you specialize here, obviously, besides Sangria? It looks like it definitely, I did check out the menu. It looks like it's some sort of tapas uh, type of restaurant. Yeah, well, we, we do a lot of tapas. Uh, mm -hmm. What we wanted to do with Sangria, which is the same thing we did in Mawa, was to create a very authentic atmosphere. Uh, from the music, to the wines, to the beers, to the food, uh, we just wanted people to feel like they were in Spain when they come through our doors. And that's the experience that we wanted to have. Absolutely. And we cannot wait. And, of course, it wouldn't be an episode of The Pulse if Krista Stuccio of Hashtag Food Pick is not joining us. And she actually is actually approaching me right now. She's like, get out of my time here. you know. And she will be sitting down with our good friend Alfredo to try out some dishes. Alfredo, what do you think sets you apart from... Uh, other Spanish restaurants, whether it's in the Hoboken area, Hudson County area, or North Jersey area? Well, again, as I said before, we have 11 different beers wow. that all come from Spain. Mm -hmm. Most restaurants will carry two or three. Mm -hmm. uh, all the wines that we offer come from Spain. Gotcha. Uh, a lot of people will do California wines, Italian wines. The experience here is all about Spain. Uh, and that's, I think that's one of the biggest differences. Uh, uh, the other part of the, uh, the issue is the food. We try to make it uh, very authentic. We use authentic ingredients. We buy everything from uh, Ole Ole, which is uh, in, uh, in Hudson County, and from a place in, uh, in Queens. So we, we try to have our ingredients be authentic. Uh, the, uh, the wines are authentic. The beers are authentic. It's, it's really about having people experience Spain without having to go to Spain. Fantastic. Really quickly, before we send you inside, it's cold out here, I know. Your hours here, where people could possibly find you on social media and if you have a website. Absolutely. Our website is sangriahoboken.com. Uh, on social media, we're on Instagram, on Facebook. Uh, the, the days of operations are Tuesday through Friday from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. On Saturdays, we open for brunch from 10 in the morning and we close at 11 o'clock at night. And on Sundays, we open for brunch also from uh, 10 in the morning and we close up at 8 p.m. All right, enough of me. We're gonna head inside. Krista is standing by with Alfredo. Uh, well, we have to send Alfredo back in because she's standing by inside. Um, and she's gonna try some of your dishes tonight. Excellent. Absolutely. Let's go inside. Thank you, Peter. I mean, thank you. Look at all this amazing food that we have right here. I can't even hear myself over this sizzling steak. Can you hear me? I do. I do. Okay, hear you. okay, good. <laughs> so let's just dive right in, Alfredo. Sure. What should we start with? The sangria flight? Yeah, let's Look how start with the stunning flight. this is. Yeah, so our sangria flight obviously giving you a taste, a uh, small taste of each of our of the sangrias that we offer. Yeah. Uh, the first, uh, well, let's start with the classic okay, we'll start red. Right here. Uh, it's uh, a red sangria with our uh, proprietary mixture, makes it authentic to us. We have a blood orange, a white peach, and then this is a monthly special, and for this month, uh, for, th for Valentine's Day, we're doing a rose cava strawberry sangria. Beautiful. Now, one of the things that's uh, different about us is we don't put ice at all in our sangria. I love that. Yeah. I am not a fan of ice. A lot of people think I'm weird for this, but I just like my beverage. Without correct. any distractions. Correct, correct. Because yeah. the moment you start putting ice in the sangria, it waters it down. Yep. So we never put ice. If they want ice, they can get it, but of we course. try not to do the ice. And then we always put a small fork in our it's because so cute. yeah, because of the fact that we put fruit in each of our sangria. Amazing. So at the end of your sangria drinking, you can eat 
that fruit. You thought of which it all. Is, you know, which is all packed. I'm gonna start with the classic. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite? That's my favorite. I usually go for a red sangria. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, wow, delicious. Yep. Um, I really like the sangria at Pier 13, and that is up there with Pier 13, let me tell you. Thank you. All right, so this is the special. Right. This looks like a fun little like champagne. Strawberry yeah, well, champagne. The, the cava is the equivalent of the uh, French champagne Ooh. is the Spanish cava. It's Ooh. a bu bubbly. That's delicious. I want that at brunch. Yep. That's amazing. I feel Thank like you. I don't want to knock this over here. This is the blood orange. Blood orange. Beautiful. And again, a lot of fruit. A lot of fruit. Oh, wow. That one's nice. It's very fresh. And, that's and then the white peach. got our white peach with our cute fork. Yep. Ooh. See, I love this. It's a drink and a snack. <laughs> that's my kind of drink. Oh, God. We've got some other things going on. I'm, the sizzling steak is still distracting me. So I'll move this out of the way. Okay. And let's just go in for the paella, right. if I can scoot it over without burning myself. Okay, what's so special about this paella? What's going on in okay, here? Okay, so this paella. I'm gonna start eating while you're talking. Absolutely, by the way. absolutely. <laughs> so you have uh, a mixture of different ingredients here. You have chorizo, which is Spanish sausage. Mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, shrimp, you have chicken. Uh, what you're eating, obviously, clams. We have mm -hmm. mussels. Uh, one of the big differences between our uh, paella and most paellas, most restaurants use Uncle Ben rice. We use Calasparo rice. Okay. And the Calasparo rice is a short grain. Uh, it's, I believe, I believe it's more flavorful. It gives you a little bit more of a liquidy feel to it. Okay. Uh, and I, I think this makes it uh, more authentic to what you get when you're in Spain. I've never been to Spain, but you now haven't? I feel, okay. no, not yet at least, but it's on my list. Right. Um, I'm having trouble scooping this, but do you want to, do you want to have some as well? Yeah, 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 go ahead. You so, uh, again, the, the whole, the whole idea of this restaurant is to create uh, the feeling that you are in Europe. And, uh, you know, even with the beers, mm. uh, the way that we uh, sell wine here, you know, everything that, that's in front of us with the uh, sangrias, uh, we have all these wines that are coming from Spain, and okay. that's how we prepare ours. We don't use California wines or you know, any other type of wine. We use everything from Spain. Authenticity. That's what we love. Oh, you got some uh, calamari in there. Yep. Speaking of calamari, let's move on to this octopus. Okay. First of all, this is maybe the most beautiful octopus I've ever seen in my life. Thank you. What is the actual term or the word for it that I, I, I just... Well, pulpo is the name of octopus for Spanish. Okay. Okay. Um, this is a Galician octopus, uh, buying it uh, from a, a vendor that specializes in bringing products from Spain. Okay. Uh, we um, basically preparing it in the uh, traditional way. Uh, we, we put it into uh, hot water to cook it. Uh, we then put a romesco sauce on top, which is mm. a paprika uh, sauce that has marcona almonds in it. And uh, marcona almonds, again, something that is from Spain. Wow. We, we uh, put uh, a lot of love and effort into you know what, everything we prepare here at This Sangria. is delicious. And I don't know what this sauce or dressing is on this, well, the, the salad. The, the, uh, the salad is uh, berros, which is watercress. Okay. This is amazing. You know how sometimes you bite into an octopus and it's got a little bit of a... A rubbery? A rub, yeah, yeah. absolutely no, no rubbery going on here. We love that. All right. You want a bite of that or absolutely. you want to move on? Absolutely. We got the steak over here. Yeah, let's bring the steak in. Okay. I'm afraid so, to touch it. Yeah, no, we're, we're good. Yeah, you know what? It's still kind of hot. <laughs> <laughs> so right. this is this is a, a ribeye, a two pound of ribeye, and I'll give you a little bit of background on both of these dishes here. Uh, this is more of a southern Spain, Andalusia, okay. Valencia. This is more of a northern Spain, which is the Basque region. Okay. Um, the chuletón is what we call it, and it's a very uh, you know popular in northern Spain. 
Um, it's a, we serve it as a ribeye of a steak. Some people will sell it as a T-bone, mm -hmm. but we wanted to have it more of a flavorful, juicier steak, and that's why we decided to go with the ribeye. It's beautiful. Yep. I'm sure it tastes just as amazing. Yep. And then on the side here, we've got some stunning mashed potatoes. I'm a big mash. Oh, thank you. Yep. So the mashed potatoes has manchego cheese, which is uh, a sheep uh, cheese from Spain. Oh my goodness. Yep. And the uh, the spinach, obviously, an offering of a vegetable with wow. the, the garlic and onions. Mm. I gotta get a scoop of that and have it with the steak. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Thank you. You want to cut yourself a piece? Absolutely. I got a beautiful cut of steak. Get to sit and watch me eat it. Steak and mashed potatoes, just classic combination. I love that you added the cheese in there too. And again, we wanted to make it as Spanish as possible. Mm -hmm. You know, potatoes is potatoes. But what you do on top of the potato, obviously will give it a little bit of a different flavor. Oh yeah, flavor. add a little bit of pizzazz. Right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me and telling me a little bit more about your menu. I'm so excited to try more. Thank you so much, and thank you for coming in. <laughs> of course. We'll be right back. Peter Biancomano, your hostess with the mostest of the Pulse with Peter B. Folks, don't forget to go on our Facebook and our Instagram pages by searching The Pulse with Peter B and like and follow us on each of those platforms. We're constantly updating those pages with previews of each week's segments and cool stories. Also, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our email address at thepulsewithpeterv at gmail.com. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. And we were just at Sangria Restaurant. We hopped across town, back in studio. And the person to my right is a person that always looks like he drinks way too much sangria. And that is our resident political analyst every week. And that is Josh Sotomayor Einstein. Josh, how are you today, sir? I'm, I'm good. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not currently hepped up on sangria. <laughs> but it is a wonderful restaurant with delicious food and, and a wonderful staff. Thank you. Yeah, and, and if you look at the last segment, you might have noticed Josh uh, in a few of the shots. Because Stuffing my face with my friends. I, I was going to say, you know, anywhere that there is a, a good meal, he's not going to miss, as you could tell. Well, you know, you don't get a body like this by not eating. <laughs> uh, bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Anyway, so Josh, today we're going to head out to the Peninsula City, as they call it. And that is the city of Bayonne, because they do have a mayoral race the first Tuesday in May coming up. Um, who are the candidates running there? So the two major candidates are uh, mayoral incumbent Jimmy Davis, who's up for his uh, third election. Uh, so he's currently in his second term as mayor and he's running for re-election. Cool. And then council president uh, Sharon Nadrowski is running, uh, challenging him. She used to be part of his coalition and now she's decided to strike out on her own. Yeah, very interesting. And uh, it, by all means, it's going to be a uh, bloody race for Hudson County. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Council President Nadrowski, as you mentioned, was part of Jimmy Davis's ticket the first two times uh, she ran. And I believe she's been council president there for a number of years uh, that she's been on there. Uh, why don't we talk about, at first, the slates here. Jimmy Davis is pretty much done filling his slates. He only has uh, one person to go. But Council President Nadrowski has nobody yet to, to run with her. Um, do you think this is a strategy or she can't find anybody? So I, I think it's actually really interesting if you look at, uh, and granted this is obviously filtered through, through different uh, filters. Sorry for that dumb sentence. <laughs> but um, if you look at the, the slates, right? So obviously Nadrowski doesn't have one yet. Uh, but if you look at what happened uh, with Mayor Davis's slate, um, it becomes apparent uh, when reading the news articles that you know, maybe one of his incumbents decided not to run again, but some of the other news articles make it seem like he was informed that he wouldn't be on the ticket with Mayor Davis. Uh, and then Davis asked uh, somebody else um, to, uh, to come in and run with him. So it looks like maybe not everything is at peace uh, in Davis's coalition. Mm. Uh, right now it seems to be uh, below the surface, but if that boils to the surface, that could definitely benefit Nadrowski. 
Um, and uh, we don't know. There's still uh, plenty of time before the uh, the election. Yeah, and 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 the person you're talking about is uh, uh, the second ward councilman, and that's Sal Golas or Golas, excuse me, if I'm butchering that name. Um, and it's interesting because right, he was shocked not to be running with Davis, as you mentioned. Then uh, decided not to run at all. But now he's also sponsoring different ordinances to raise the minimum wage for all city employees well, with the council president. Yes, yeah, Nadrowski so. actually proposed the ordinance to raise the minimum wage uh, for city employees do $15 an hour, which is a uh, big deal that uh, a lot of progressives and Democrats are pushing across um, the country and the state, of course. Um, and uh, yeah, no, it's interesting. I, I didn't want to say his name because I wasn't sure that <laughs> right. I, I was sure that I would butcher it either way. So you're apparently braver than I. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's going to be a fascinating race down there. Um, and like you said, I think it's going to be very bloody uh, because you have two established veteran politicians uh, that know how the political system works, uh, how it should work, and then also how it actually does work. Right, right. Well, let's talk about a, a hot button issue in Bayonne. Probably the biggest issue that uh, the, they've, they're facing there, and that is basically what to do with Bayonne Medical Center. Um, the land, as we've covered on this show with uh, Hudson Regional Hospital and Dr. Kafaya, um, is owned, and, and of course, Ron Simoncini, uh, uh, the spokesperson for the hospital, um, is owned by Hudson Regional Hospital hospital. However, Bayonne is trying to use, uh, and, and more specifically, the Jimmy Davis administration is trying to use eminent domain to take their land from them, even though Hudson Regional Hospital has been doing wonderful things at their current location in Sea Caucus. Never a dull moment, huh? Well, wh whether, whether it's in other towns or here, New Jersey unfortunately has a, a very um, let's say lax uh, system where it allows municipalities to use eminent domain and by use eminent domain nine times out of ten they're abusing eminent domain mm. and that's exactly what Mayor Davis is doing. Uh, so whether you like Mayor Davis or you don't like Mayor Davis you know I think we can all agree that on eminent domain he's abusing the system. It's supposed to be for a public uh, need something that's necessary for the benefit of the public, and no other recourse can be can be uh, can be met with, can be addressed. And no other way can it be can it be gotten. Um, the reality is here is you have a hospital which owns another hospital, and they want to operate it as a hospital. And sure. Mayor Davis wants to use eminent domain to try to take it from the hospital that owns it to keep it with the people that he likes, or presumably he likes, so that they can operate a hospital. There's there's no risk of the hospital closing. Yet uh, yet uh, Mayor Davis wants this spend potentially hundreds of millions of dollars of Bayonne taxpayer dollars, um, you know, just for, I don't know, to help his political friends maybe, who the hell knows. Uh, but the reality is, is that it's inexcusable, it's disgusting, um, and he should be ashamed. Yeah, I mean, uh, you hit the nail on the head there. I mean, I, I, I don't understand it. <laughs> Certainly, uh, you don't understand it as well, unless there is, you know, money being flown in, uh, 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 to uh, Mayor Davis's um, uh, political accounts with the current uh, occupiers of the hospital, which is CarePoint Health, by the way. Um, it's funny because when Mayor Davis won uh, two terms ago, um, you know, he ran against Mark Smith, who they called an establishment county HCDO uh, uh, politician. And there are people in Bayonne, and, and we, we know that there are a number of you who watch us in Bayonne, and thank you. And, uh, and we've received your emails about covering your, uh, your town, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, there, you know, there are a number of people in Bayonne who would say that Jimmy Davis is now part of the same establishment that he basically you know, spoke out against when he first ran. I mean, if you look at Broadway, which is the main avenue down in, uh, in Bayonne, I mean, there's pothole after pothole after pothole. I mean, sometimes they say absolute power causes is even honest people to behave badly. Do you think that this is well, uh, the saying is that Davis is going through? The saying is that power corrupts. Absolute power tends to corrupt absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, That's and another one. So you know, listen. <laughs> I, I, I have friends down in Bayonne that are that are that are friends or friendly with Mayor Davis. So it's nothing personal. Uh, it's just an evaluation of the actions. So whether it's the potholes on Broadway, uh, whether it's you know dirty streets. Uh, whether it's the shenanigans with the hospital, you know, abusing eminent domain to keep someone from keeping it a hospital when it's, there's no danger of it not being a hospital, right. and spending hundreds of millions of tax dollars, or the allegations in, in City Hall of you know inappropriate texting and whatnot, 
Um, mm. You know, it's not a personal thing. Mice, it's just an evaluation of the facts that are out in the public. And there's probably facts that are not in the public and they may mitigate, they may back up some of these accusations and whatnot. But the reality is, is that as an elected leader, you owe your, your, your constituents, your town, uh, a certain level of your personal responsibility. And whether it's these things that we mentioned, the potholes, dirty streets, abusing eminent domain, uh, or accusations of impropriety, it's just not, not acceptable. It could happen to someone that's establishment, someone that's not establishment, but definitely when someone joins the establishment, they, they start to think that their own um, ish don't stink, mm -hmm. as they say. Mm -hmm. So that could be something that he's suffering from. So, Josh, really quickly, we have a few seconds uh, left here. Uh, do you think, you know, obviously Jimmy Davis beat Mark Smith uh, for his uh, first victory uh, uh, for mayor, um, and then he beat Jason O'Donnell um, when he ran for a second term. Do you think that Council President Nadrowski um, has probably the best shot to, uh, to beat him this time around? I definitely think it's going to be an uh, interesting and fantastic race to watch. Um, I feel like it's probably going to be super annoying for the people of Bayonne uh, <laughs> because these two former allies are now fighting each other and there's always a certain level of tension, um, extra tension when it's uh, former allies yeah. that are trying to distinguish themselves from each other. Uh, but uh, I think uh, I think Ndrowski has a good shot. Um, and, uh, you know, regardless of whether she wins or whether she doesn't, I, I hope that uh, the potholes get filled, that eminent domain abuse uh, ends in Bayonne um, in terms of the hospital and that uh, the city of Bayonne can uh, can prosper. Absolutely. All right. Well, Josh Sotomayor Einstein, uh, always uh, giving us uh, the real take here on the Pulse with Peter B. Thanks so much for uh, coming in today. It was a pleasure. Absolutely. All right, uh, Peninsula City residents, don't worry. We, we still have like three months before your uh, mayoral race. We will be talking about it more and more as the race gets closer. We will be right back. Peter Biancomano back with you. Don't forget to watch us on cable access every Sunday and Monday at 9 a.m. Optimum Channel 18, Files Channel 46, and Comcast Channel 190. Also on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m., you can watch our show on our YouTube channel, and you can also binge watch all of our old shows. Who doesn't want to keep watching The Pulse with Peter Bay? We'll see you there. Welcome back to The Pulse with Peter B. And folks, today is the big day. Uh, we've been talking about this for two weeks now, including today's show. Uh, I want to thank Nick Shefniski for coming on last week, our former pro athlete. Um, he will certainly be on in future episodes, maybe even discussing other sports. They say that once you're an athlete in one sport, you're pretty good in, in, in all sports. But the gentleman to my right might look a little familiar to you. He's a friend of ours from the Jersey Sports Reports, the other cable access show on this network, and that is Mr. Mr. Bobby Blackjack making his Pulse premiere. Bobby, how are you, sir? How are you today? Good morning on this beautiful Sunday. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for coming in. We really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. Exactly, exactly. So, Bobby, you know, as I mentioned at the top of the uh, segment here, today is the Super Bowl. We have, of course, the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Los Angeles Rams. And, you know, last week, Nick really delved into almost like an athlete perspective of the game and what the players are going through and, and how they got there. Uh, today, with you, and by the way, Bobby is from Blackjack TV and I-95 Productions. You're going to want to check him out on those two platforms. So another media guy here, which I love. Um, you, we, today we want to delve into some matchups, you know, obviously. What are some matchups, uh, the game within the game, as they like to say, that you are going to be looking for later on tonight for the game? Well, I'm, I'm looking at, from an uh, explosive um, offensive point of view, Jalen Ramsey, arguably the best cornerback in football, going against Jamar Chase, mm. who had some tremendous breakout performances second half of the season for the for the Bengals that propelled them to where they are now. Uh, of course, him and uh, quarterback Joe Burrow played together in college uh, and didn't miss a beat after that one year off between their uh, graduations. Wow, that's incredible, I know. And who would have thought they would have been drafted together, right? Um, and then, okay, so that's the wide receiver matchup with this first Cincinnati against the one of the best corners in the league for L.A., as you said, Jalen Ramsey. You know, um, certainly L.A. has got very, very good wide receivers. Odell Beckham was added, you know, earlier uh, in, in, in the year. I mean, it's going to be interesting to, uh, to see how he goes against those young corners on Cincinnati. 
uh, the young corners, especially if you're a Giant fan, we got to watch Eli Apple, <laughs> the guy we kicked out of town pretty much, now in the Super Bowl talking trash against us a few weeks ago. Uh, we'll see how he plays against uh, the formidable L.A. Ram uh, wide receivers, like you mentioned. It should be a, a chess match within a chess match, which is really what you want to see on a field. Absolutely. And I think that something that, that Nick spoke about last week um, was the offensive line for the Cincinnati Bengals. I mean, uh, Joe Burrow, I think, was was sacked in one of the playoff games, what was it, six or seven times? Nine, nine, nine times. times nine me, times. Which I think was a playoff record, yes. if I'm not mistaken. I mean, it just goes to show you that, that Cincinnati offensive line, again, a young offensive line, needs some work. But the defensive line for the L.A. Rams is one of the best defensive lines in the league. And plus, you know, we mentioned Jalen Ramsey being the best uh, cornerback in the league. Aaron Donald could be the best player in the league, yeah. non-quarterback. So the key to the game also is to keep that uh, D-line out of the backfield, um, get him away from Joe Burrow, and create lanes for Joe Mixon, who I think is the best running back on the field this week, uh, today. Right, absolutely. Or this week, you can say it's this same. week today. today <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's the same, uh, same principle there. Yeah. You know, uh, all right. Now let's talk about the quarterback matchup. You know, of course, uh, Matthew Stafford um, going first year in LA, making the Super Bowl and all that good stuff. Going against the second year man in Joe Burrow, coming off that horrendous knee uh, um, uh, surgery that he had in the off season. I mean, you know, a lot of people say this is like a mirror image of each other. I mean, it's 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 basically uh, people. People see a lot of Matthew Stafford in Joe Burrow, let's just say. Would you agree with that, Bobby? Well, this is only the second time in Super Bowl history where two former number one draft pick quarterbacks are playing against one another. I believe the last one was, um, if not mistaken, Peyton Manning versus Cam Newton a few years back. So right there you have pedigree. Uh, and I'm, if not mistaken, both coming from SEC schools. Yeah. Um, my, my thing, though, is that I think everybody is focusing so much on Joe Burrow Mm. Now, if you're like me and I've played years of fantasy football, I've had <laughs> Matt Stafford when he was on the Lions. And you saw, I saw that he had the potential to be a great quarterback, albeit on a not-so-good team. Right. So I think with all this hype of Joe Burrow, I think Matthew Stafford's being a little overlooked. But then again, the sports books have him as the favorite to an MVP. So I think the public perception has Joe Burrow, while the... Analytics are, are saying Matt Stafford is, is due to have this to really finalize his redemption, so to speak, and come out on top. Exactly. By the way, I'm going to pause our little conversation here because we need to talk about your Joe Burrow-esque glasses that you're wearing today. I mean, yeah, I think I'd come in with my little, uh, you know, sporty jacket and glasses to... Uh, Kind of give a you know Joe Burrow effect to the broadcast, <laughs> you know. And we, we really I'm, I'm just missing the bling. I, I don't have the bling. It's on, it's on order. Uh, you know, Amazon's late today. I mean, look, you know, there are. It is uh, Sunday, you know. Yeah, exactly. Supply chain issues. Just play. Supply Everybody chain. else is blaming supply chain issues. Why can't we do it on the? Uh, yeah, my bling segment? is uh, somewhere in uh, on a boat out in uh, the Atlantic. <laughs> hey, listen, and and well, why don't we talk about uh, uh, the Pacific, um, where you know because the Super Bowl is going to be played in LA. Um, uh, Basically, you know, of course, the second year ever, the second time ever, of course, it's the second year in a row where a home team is playing the Super Bowl in their home stadium, um, which is crazy. It's never happened before. You know, L.A. usually gets a bad rap in terms of their fans. They really don't have a lot of fans. There's a lot of opposing teams' fans. But Cincinnati's not really that popular of a team as well. I mean, certainly not the Dallas Cowboys, and I'm saying that because, you know, they are America's team. Um, and uh, the Green Bay Packers and the Bears and, 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 you know, the upper echelon popular teams in the league, I'm trying to say. You know, do you think that it's going to be really a home field advantage for L.A. in their stadium someday, today? Well, Pete, have you seen the... the I mean, I saw a graph the other day. Have you seen the prices of tickets? Uh, I know they go up every year. I'm sure but they're ridiculous. Because it's in L.A. and because you have this, um, you know, the, the L.A. home advantage, they're talking about six, seven, ten, twenty thousand dollars or more a ticket for what? this game. Now, yeah. one thing we don't know from the history of, of football is: uh, do or does Cincinnati travel well? Do their fans? We don't know that. Right now. The problem with the game being in L.A., as you mentioned, and these prices, is that are they pricing out the uh, Bengals <laughs> diehards from watching the game? That's a really good point. I mean, I, I didn't think about it's that. It's going to be a celebrity fest. I mean, you know how you go right. to a ball game and it's like, oh, look who's in the stands today. Yeah. I think the whole Hollywood, 
and the whole industry of music, sports, and and movies will be there watching this game. <laughs> Not too many orange jackets with a uh, you know bangles in the back. I don't believe. But uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Well, look, we can't uh, leave the segment if you don't give us a prediction with the score of the Super Bowl later later this uh, evening. Who do you like in this game, and what's the score going to be, Bobby? I think today well, I have two predictions for you, Pete. Oh. I have a game prediction. I think LA um, pulls this out. I think Joe Burrow will is and will be a great quarterback going forward. Sometimes you need to get that little taste. I think he got his taste. He got his his name up in the upper echelon of NFL quarterbacks today. But I see I see um, LA winning by about a touchdown. I see about 31-24. 31-24. You're here. To, you heard it here. You know. Let's see if his prediction is right. Stay tuned for the game later on tonight, 6 p.m., 6.15. Who knows what time yep. the game actually is. One more, one more. Yeah, I'm sorry. The second prediction. One more Go prediction. Ahead. The halftime show. Oh. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. All right. Remains um, to be. There's people that watch the game just for the halftime show. And this year is very <laughs> controversial. You have all the 90s hip-hop stars. Uh, music. Uh, People that have played here in Hoboken, right, DJ all these years, they got the crowd going nuts. So we'll see what happens. But I think you're going to see a, a lot of um, either praise or scorn for what we're going to see at halftime. All right. I like that. All right. Well, Bobby Blackjack, our guest sports insider today on The Post, we hope to see you in the future. We really do. I hope to uh, get invited back. I love uh, it. I love ex it. Exactly. Instead of just a Jersey sports report. We're jealous of those guys over there. So, <laughs> All right, Bobby. Thanks again. I really appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thanks. From I-95 Productions and Blackjack TV. And folks, Nick will be back in future episodes. So will Bobby. I'll make that guarantee you right now. And uh, we look forward to having both of them back. All right, folks. Today's show was brought to you by the Pilsner House and Beer Garden, located at 1422 Grand Street. Visit them. Have a brat. Have a pretzel. Have a beer. Have a good time. I'm Peter Biancavano. Join us next week for The Pulse on everything you need to know. Have a great week, everybody.